Hi everybody. In this video we're going to look at lab one. So you have three labs this semester. Uh, each one takes around an hour to two hours and we're dropping the lowest lab. So if you do a really good job on this one you really only have to do well on one of the other two. Um, so it's good incentive to do well on this one. So that we're in week four. So you're probably watching this video in week four unless you're getting ahead. And um, it takes you to, you know, your Wiley Plus, and then you have these three things, or four things that talk about the lab. So if you're not sure what everything is in Canvas, because most of the stuff you've done in Canvas has just been reading and Wiley Plus homework and adaptive practice. So anytime there's a paperclip symbol here, that's a document to download. So we have two downloadable documents here. This one is a Word document, Microsoft Word. And this one is a Microsoft Excel file, so um, I'm guessing you went and got Microsoft Office, so you'll have no trouble with Excel. If you have not yet gotten Microsoft Office, stop this video and go back and get Microsoft Office using the instructions in the first technology video or the ones in the syllabus. Then there's a link here, so this is just a little, it's like a little chain, and that's just a link to the reading. Uh, this is just a link to the ebook. I'm just going to click on all this stuff and show you what everything is. Um, so the overview is here. So you just, you can read it in, you know, here if you want, or you can download it. So I'm going to download it just to show you what it looks like. You can save it wherever you want. I'm just going to save it uh, on my desktop. And what this is, is this is the same as your as your lab except this is the word version it's like the printed version so the first half of your lab the first half of your lab is a review for the exam so what it is it's uh, the, it has two parts part one is a vocab summary review and then part two is the actual lab so before you do the lab you need to have completed up through section 2.6, right? It says right here, you have to do, so if you have not yet done that, go do it now. So if you're working ahead, go finish everything else because the review material covers everything up to 2.6. There is some additional review material that will be posted uh, as we get closer to the exam. Um, but this, document only goes up through section 2.6 the review part uh, if you want to complete section 2.7 before doing this that's fine uh, and it'll actually give you a slight advantage um, because there's some stuff we cover in this lab that comes from section 2.7 it might make it a little easier all right so what does it say here so it says to begin read this section in your textbook um, now there's a link uh, to the ebook, but if you have the hardback version and you want to read it separately, it's after chapter two. So that's where this comes in here. Um, so we've downloaded the um, we've downloaded the the document. So we go back and you can see uh, Lab One Reading Unit A Essential Synthesis. So you click on that, it takes you to the ebook. Um, and you can see that there's lots and lots of stuff here. To click on right um, let me see yeah here we go uh, so you just go to resources and click e-text and that's how you can read it again video tutorials some of the stuff you've seen before so um, the video tutorials are similar to what we studied uh, in the chapter one and two sections where there would be learning goals and every learning goal had a corresponding video in the ebook I'm not assigning unit A, it's just a review. It's a review of chapters one and two. I'm not assigning that separately uh, as exercises. That's why we have the lab. But if you want to watch the videos, they're here. So they're in the resources tab. Or you can just go to the ebook and read it. So what it does is this unit A synthesis um, ties together everything we've learned so far in chapters one and two. There is also a study guide posted for this essential synthesis. If you want to read that first, that's up to you. It's just a summary of this essential synthesis. 
it's basically the same thing, and it's a lot of the um, book exercises from this, or on this uh, study guide that you can do. That's not assigned as something you have to do, but it's something you can do in class uh, next week when we're using uh, class time for uh, studying for the exam. Okay, so that's that. Again, lots of additional resources. There's the, the video, uh, video solutions for the examples in the Essential Synthesis. So if you click on here, you can read it. Bunch of words. You guys know how that works. Um, and then, you know, uh, let's find an example here. Yeah, right here. So there's like, uh, they call it data. And now we're A1. So the A stands for unit A. Unit A is chapters one and two. And it talks about a sleep study with students. Uh, and then you just, it, you know, it'll ask you, what are the cases? What's the sample size? Stuff we did in chapters one and two. And then you can watch the video. So it's just, it's got nice little built-in reviews in the textbook um, that I'm assigning just for you to do. There's no accompanying video from me or anything like that. The lab is basically the video. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then there's like, uh, choo -choo 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 -choo. oh, more resources you can click on if you're not sure. This is where these are all just resources for you to click on. Microsoft Excel. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Oh, how do you, TI-83 manual, little stat key overview. All that stuff is in here. I'll let you look at that at your leisure. I'm going to show you how to do the lab, so you probably won't need to refer to any of that stuff. But you're going to use stat key and Excel for the lab. All right, so let's go back. Oh, clicked on the wrong button. Let's go back. All right, so we have the document open here. So what I recommend is printing this document out, working it out on paper, just because it there's two parts to the lab and you're going to be doing Excel and stat key at the same time. So if you're going to be doing canvas and Excel and stat key all at the same time, that might get a little confusing, might be easier to print it out. And then you can work through it, write your answers down. And then when you're, when you're ready to like take the quiz for real, just type all your answers in because you will have done it already. Again, it doesn't take too long. Uh, if you're prepared, if you're looking everything up, so for example, here, uh, this is a little review. So it says here, you know, a variable is classified as blank if it divides the data cases into groups. If you don't know that answer and you're looking it up, then you're sort of doing this wrong, right? The idea is that you're studying before you try to do this lab. That's, if, if you're doing that or you know the answers, it'll take about an hour. If you're looking everything up, it'll take more than an hour. Yeah, use it as a study tool. All right, so let me show you some more stuff here. All right, next up we have the lab data. Okay, this is an Excel file. So you just click on it. We're going to open it right in Excel. I'm just going to drop it on the desktop. Um, just so I, if I need to go get it, I can go get it. And then click on it and open it in Excel. So let me explain what's going on with this document. All right. So you're going to watch a video, and I'm not going to explain too much. A lot of it's in the video. Uh, there's a TED Talk done by Nick Marks, and he was interested in how can we predict um, if a country is successful in some way or happy in some way or taking care of its environment. Like, how do we measure that sort of thing? So what Nick Marks did is he collected a ton of data from all of these countries. So there's like 160 countries or something. Yeah, 144 countries. He collected data and he started combining these measurements and trying to come up with a measurement that would actually capture what it's like to be in that country compared to other countries in terms of happiness, success, longevity, just all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. When you are ready to do the assignment, you're going to watch the video. Okay, so I'm going to let you do all the video stuff. So let's just look at a couple of these questions and see how this works. So part one here, that's just review. Um, I'm going to let you do that. But here's the application. Right, so you might recognize this. Uh, there's a couple problems in the homework that look like this. And the idea is 
um, Nick Marks decided to plot ecological footprint against happiness. And he wanted to know if a country uh, has a larger carbon footprint, does that make them happier? And so you look at the graph and you would say there is a blankety blank association, positive, negative, weak, strong, linear, nonlinear, right? All that section 2.5 and 2.6 stuff. Um, and so you, you'll comment on that. And, and the idea is that you're supposed to think about, um, you know, what is the effect of ecological footprint on happiness? Well, this goes on and on. So there's lots and lots of things that happen with this. So I'm going to let you try that part. Again, this, this stuff's in the textbook. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the data crunching. There are There is a little bit of number crunching that goes on with this. Um, okay. Um, did I skip one? Hold on. Let me check here real quick. Just make sure I didn't skip anything. Yeah, here's another. Oh, that's the same one. Yeah, and then uh, down here, it, this is all in the video too. Uh, the the TED Talk video that's part of the lab. You can see that the numbers correspond to different regions of the world, similar to what you saw if you've seen the section two point seven video. Similar to that, right, where the colors are associated to a region. <clears throat> okay, here we go. So let's start with number seven. So let's talk about how to do this. Use stat key in the Happy Planet Index data set provided in Canvas. Already got it, right? That's my Excel file right here, right? Happy Planet Index. Um, to create a box plot for the variable life expectancy. So let's talk about how to do this. All right. So we go here, and everybody knows what life expectancy means, right? That's the average length of life for people in that country. So let's say you wanted to use life expectancy to predict how happy a country would be. I would think that if you live longer, you're probably happier. That's what I would think. You're allowed to have your own opinions. Opinions, um, there are some opinion questions later in the lab that you can write whatever you want. And as long as you can support your argument and it makes sense, you'll get full points. There are no right or wrong answers for a lot of this stuff, for a lot of the opinion questions. For this one, there is. So the idea here is I have to make a box plot of life expectancy. But I'd also like to keep track of which country is which, right? You can see in the document that I have to describe the box plot and I have to identify outliers. Well, I'd really like to know what the outliers are. So when I copy this thing into stat key, I'd really like to include the names of the countries. So the way you do this, in Excel, you, I want to put this column, I want to put column A and column D into stat key, but I don't want these two columns here to get in the way. So what I'm going to do, you highlight these, and then you select hide. So on a PC, you just right click and then click hide and they go away. Now they're still there. If you want to bring them back, you highlight everything on both sides and then click unhide and they'll come back. So we're going to hide them. Now we're going to copy both of these columns into stat key. All right. So Google remembers stat key for me. However you want to get there is fine. If you forgot how to get to stat key, literally the easiest way to get there is to just Google the word stat key. It'll be the first match, okay? Now, let's look at our data. Here we have the names of the countries, and here we have life expectancy. So we need to decide how many variables there are and what kind of variables. So is country a categorical variable? And what kind of variable is life expectancy? Well, country is not a variable, right? That's the identifier. It's not a variable. It's the cases. Each country here is a case. So there's only one quantitative variable. So what you do is you just highlight everything, and then you just, you either right click or control C or whatever you do to copy. And you're just going to copy that into stat key. And we have one quantitative variable. So 
So just click on one quantitative variable. We're going to edit the data. So just click edit data and just clear everything out. And then we're going to paste the data in, however you paste in, right click or control V. And then just to be safe, make sure that you might want to backspace once just so that there's no extra extra data in there and then click OK. So we're going to be making a box plot, but I just want to talk about the dot plot real quickly. So the reason we copied in, you can look at the data, the reason we copied in the names of the countries, right? And you want to copy in the, the title too, right? The header, because that shows up in your graph, right? Um, I can figure out what every country is by just mousing over it. So which countries have the longest life expectancy? Hong Kong, Japan, and Iceland. I bet you guys could all have guessed those. So, um, so that's, that's the advantage of, these, of the identifiers is just mousing over, right? And then you can identify. Um, so let's go, let's look at box plot. There's our box plot. So the question is, uh, is it skewed or symmetric? And if it's skewed, which way? Is there an outlier and what country is the outlier? Well, you can just mouse over. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you the answer, but you can just mouse over that, uh, mouse over, over, you just, just mouse over right on top of the asterisk and you'll see which country it is. And in the lab, when you're doing the actual lab, uh, these are squares, right? Which means you can select multiple items. When they're circles, you can only select one. Squares, you can select multiple. All right, so um, that's how you do box plots, right? And everything else is going to be the same. So here, we want to do footprint. That's for number 10. Footprint, that's carbon footprint, right? And the way you do it is footprint is over here. I still want the country, so we're going to hide life expectancy. And then you would copy country and footprint in together and then do another box plot, right? That's another quantitative variable. So you clear out the old stuff, copy in the new stuff. If there's spaces, just get rid of the spaces. And it should work fine. Most people do not have trouble with this. If you're struggling, go back and watch this video again and keep up and do exactly what I'm doing at every step. If you need to pause a bunch, pause a bunch. But everything I'm doing, you can do. All right, uh, there's one other thing I want to show you. Scatter plots. All right, so number 13. Uh, stat key, we're going to do a scatter plot for HPI and GDP per capita. All right, so I'm going to unhide everything. So HPI and GDP per capita. So I need this column and this column. We're just looking for the correlation, so the order doesn't matter. Okay, so that's important. If we were doing a regression line, the order would matter. So I'm going to get rid of HPI rank. I'm going to hide that. And then I'm going to copy in HPI and GDP per capita. Right? That's what this says right here. We're doing number 13. So in stat key, we're making a scatter plot. So just go back, click on stat key, go back. That's two quantitative variables for a scatter plot. Edit data, delete it, and then paste in what you saved. Oh. Here we go. Let me try it again. There we go. Now I'm pasting, so let me try that again. That's the wrong data. There we go. Should be just numbers, right? Now you can see that this one has like a missing number. That's okay, it won't mess with anything. HPI GDP per capita, we have a header row. And you can see that the variable names show up. So one of the questions is, you know, describe the correlation. Well, there's your correlation. And then you have to say, is that a significant correlation or not? Well, remember, guys, you can just look at the graph to see if there's a significant association. If you can imagine a strong straight line graph for a regression line, 
then it's a strong association. So you can actually click on show regression line here. If that's not what you imagined, then that means there is not a strong association there. So just remember, this number only tells us a little bit. This number only has meaning if there's a, a linear association here. You have to decide as a person whether this has a linear association, because if it does, the regression line should match that linear association. All right, well, that's how you do that. Um, okay, so we just did a graph for this happy planet index. So let's go through and talk a little bit about what's going on here. So you have a few more questions at the end, but everything is pretty much a variation on hiding columns, selecting the column, pasting the column in the stacking. Pretty much, and then just uh, choosing the correct graph and stuff in Stacky. So there are some follow-up questions towards the end where you have to do some um, critical thinking. So if you're not sure what everything is, you can look everything up. So there are seven regions represented uh, by the graph. Um, then there's happiness, which is just a score on a scale of 0 to 10 of the average level of happiness in the country. And I know some of you are skeptical. I mean, I have students every semester that say things like, well, you can't really measure happiness and all this stuff. Look, guys, the point of this thing is to try to learn something, anything, so that we can understand what it means for a country to be happy. What? So if, if, if there were, let's say there's one country in the world that's truly happy, don't you think the other countries would try to follow along with what that one country is doing? So, sure, it might be difficult to measure happiness. But if we were able to at least approximate it, don't you think that's a good thing? So I don't want you guys to be too skeptical. So the last question on your, um, the last question you have to do on the lab is sort of a critical analysis of sort of what we're doing here. And you're not allowed to say that happiness can't be measured or that success can't be measured because there's too many confounding variables. I don't want you to go down that road. Of course there's confounding variables. We're not trying to say that any particular thing is causing any other thing. But we're looking for associations between variables that will help people understand what sorts of connections can a country make that will enable the people that live there to be happy. That's all this is, okay? It's not as deep as you might think, just because there's a lot of data, that doesn't make it deep. Okay, um, all right, so, so then, yeah, so there's happiness, life expectancy. Footprint, that's just carbon footprint. It's just a measure per capita. This is footprint per capita. So for example, uh, Haiti doesn't have much carbon emissions, right? But people there are very unhappy and don't live very long. So we saw in that first graph that it looks like countries that whose footprints are too small do suffer some kind of unhappiness. But the idea is, is there a balance? Is there a middle ground, right? That's the idea. Uh, then there's happy life years, and you guys can go through and read all this stuff, but I want you to think about what all this stuff means, right? Then the big one, the one the video is about is this happy planet index. It is sort of a wacky computation. The formula is given. You don't have to know anything about the formula. But basically, um, it's happy life years, right? So how long does somebody live and how happy are they while they're living, roughly? Um, and then there's it's multiplied by inequality of outcomes. So if people in the country, uh, if there's less inequality... Uh, that number is bigger. I know that's kind of a weird measurement, uh, but that's how it is. And then divided by the footprint. Okay, so countries with a larger footprint are penalized on this happy planet index. And so Nick Marks came up with this, the fellow who did the uh, TED Talk that you're going to see. And uh, so the idea is, can we compare this happy planet index to the old measures? Um, so... GDP per capita was used as a measure of success for a long time, right? So how much money does the average citizen make in terms of just gross dollars, right? Um, 
Then there's a human development index. So human development index is down here. It's a really long explanation. I'll let you guys read that. You do have a question about the human development index and of course the population of the country in millions. So this is something that if you were interested in this sort of stuff, you can take this data and cook it up in lots of different ways and see what kind of stuff you can come up with. You don't have to do that for this lab. This is just an introduction to a large real life data set. And this is the kind of things that professionals do on some level. You don't have to be a data scientist. You don't have to be a doctor. Um, but maybe some, some of you are thinking about being psychologists. This is basically what psychologists do, except instead of looking at countries, these would all be measurements for, um, for clients who come to, uh, you know, talk to you um, or give you data. And there's all these input variables and you cook it up and try to get some output variables to learn something, anything that can help people, right? In this case, what would help these countries? So uh, this is not as wacky as it looks. So there you go. So that's pretty much it. And again, you can read all this stuff. And then your last question on the lab is you're basically comparing the human development index to the uh, HPI, happy planet index. These are not the same thing. And the idea is you basically have to say, is this a good measurement or do you prefer this measurement or would another measurement be better? Is income a better measurement? Life expectancy. Just tell me what you think. Um, for the last question, but you can't say that these things can never be known because you sure it's hard to get information, but the idea is just to get better and better and better. It's not to, you know, conquer all the world's problems, uh, in an introductory level stats course. All right. So last thing I want to show you here about this lab is, yeah, you already talked about that. I talked about that. Okay. Um, Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about is how do you actually do the lab, right? So that's here, lab one assessment, right? So when you click on this, it's the same, this is exactly the same thing as what we printed out here, or, you know, what I'd like you to print out. It's the exact same thing. Um, and then I'm just going to do a preview just to show you what it looks like. But the idea here is um, these are all multi, these are your multiple choice. So uh, these are review questions, right? Uh, one thing to notice is that the question numbers don't line up because you in Canvas you can't call this part one; it just calls it question one. So the so the question numbers are off by one. So just be really careful of that. And you can see that it's exactly the same thing. But here's where you watch the video. If you don't want to watch the video inside Canvas then uh, the URL for the video is here at the bottom of the first page that you print out. Or you can just go to YouTube and type in um, Nick Marks, um, Happy Planet Index. You can just type this in, just these keywords. It's a very popular video. Can't miss it. You don't have to watch the video inside um, Canvas. So it's about a 15 minute video or so. And then here's your multiple choice. Um, some of these are short answer. Again, look at what this says here. This says, discuss one major observation of an association between region and the two quantitative variables. Well, there's three variables here. So you need to discuss three variables, right? It's only a three point question, but the, if you guys do well on this, these are easy points. We're dropping the lowest one over the course of the semester. A good lab score can really, really boost your grade. Um, and then, you're, then there's some file upload stuff you have to do. So the way to do file upload stuff, uh, when, I, when you created this box plot, so remember, actually, let's do the scatter plot one. We already did that one. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here it is. So we still have our scatter plot, right? So I want to see a picture of this scatter plot. I want to know that you did it well. So you got some options. The easiest way to do it. There's several ways you can do this, but the easiest way to do it is just take a screenshot and save it and upload the screenshot. If you have a, um, a PC, you have you can just type in SNP. You have a snipper tool. I don't know if you guys have seen this. The snip tool is really great 
Um, and all you do is you just, it's just a little scissors, right? You just click new and then you just drag what you want to copy. All I care about is the scatter plot. So that's all I need to see. And then you just save it and make sure you're saving it as one of the approved file types, PNG, GIF, JPEG. Those are the ones I want to see. If you want to save it as a PDF, that's fine too, but SNP won't do that. Um, give it a nice name, right? Like, um, let's put, I'm going to put it on the desktop. Give it a nice name. Like, um, so put your name, you know, uh, so last name, first name, you know, and then just say like, yeah, so what is this, scatterplot? This is lab one, something like that. Save it. And then here where I'm asking you to upload it, just choose file, just go to your desktop, it'll be there. Right, and then it, it'll upload. So you have to name these things in the way uh, that I will point out. It's in the lab how you have to name them. Uh, because I have to download these. I can't view these remotely. I have to download all these documents. And so I'm going to end up with thousands of documents. So real easy to do. Or just anything you want to do um to to save it as one of the approved file types and name it properly and that's how you do it. that's how you upload a file um if you are a mac user or chromebook or whatever i'm sure there's other ways of, of doing that or if you want to take a picture of your screen and just upload the picture that's fine too it doesn't have to be a screenshot i just need to know that you made the correct graph that's all and you can see that there's like some essay questions here for like for question 21 you know, type it out, make it real nice, give a good thorough explanation or you're not going to get full credit. So this is six points out of 60. So this is 10% of your grade, this last question. And that's basically it. And when you're done, you submit it just down here, submit quiz. And um, the, there's some of it's automatically graded. The, the images and the essay questions I have to grade, as soon as I grade the images and essay questions, uh, you'll, your grade will appear in the gradebook. And that's it. So give it a shot. Let me know if you have any questions. And until next time, uh, so this will be the last video of Chapter 2. And um, let me know if you need anything, and I'll see you in class. Bye-bye now.